Well, welcome back. I see a lot of familiar faces here. Uh, we're going to do a series of four classes over the next four Wednesdays. Today we're going to focus on some basic fundamentals. We're going to look at the setup, the correct stance, and the line. Uh, before we go any further, I do want to recognize some of the medal winners from the Senior Olympics. I think we have several here. I know Country Joe Rhodes did really well. Ralph is a double gold winner. Let's give him a round of applause. All right, I want to keep this class interactive, so jump in and ask questions with whatever you want. The way the format that we're going to use is in the beginning, I'm going to give a group lesson for about 25 minutes. And then I'm going to give you a series of drills to work on with your partners. And then I'll come around and give you individualized instruction. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always do, and this is my fourth year of teaching this class at Country Roads, is I start out with a quote. Now, the quote I want to use today comes from a PhD, Bob Fancher. He wrote a book about Cool entitled The Pleasure of Small Motions. He wrote, the sport, <clears throat> the sport of Cool matters because it brings to your life the pleasures of precision and the joy of the exquisite power of small motions. It matters because it is beautiful. It matters because it is fun. And I don't know about you, but that's kind of a reminder to me why I played the game in the first place. And let me kind of illustrate that with a story. Uh, there was this young five-year-old boy who ventured up into his parents' attic. And lo and behold, he saw this beautiful nine-foot regulation pool table with its ornate light and all those beautiful colored balls around the table. He could barely reach over the edge of the pool table, but he was able to get up there. He just started rolling the balls around. Be 
this social game. Thirty miles from Hood River, Oregon, and I've been playing around with this since the '70s in in a bar. And little old men there gave me their lessons, and then I took some from Pete. And I love I love it because you can play any kind of weather. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, I'm George Haskins. Uh, I'm from Puyallup, Washington, and I think I like the camaraderie and the competition. Okay, that sounds good. Shots is breathe and relax. 
You know, you can't play pool with tense, rigid muscles in your neck and shoulders. Pool is not a tension sport, it's a relaxed sport. In fact, the pool stroke, you can almost feel the cue stick because your grip is so gentle, actually almost slides through your hand when you're doing it properly. So breathe and relax. The next thing is you want to visualize the shot. In other words, the aim, the speed, and the position. Okay, the first drill I'm going to give you, you're not even going to shoot the ball. You're just going to practice taking your stance. Now I'll go ahead and use one of these fancy cue balls here. <clears throat> this is called an elephant ball. You can buy these on, online. I'll even aim the strike right at the red line. But the main uh, first step is to find the aim point and then draw that imaginary line all the way back to the cue ball to the tape. Now to get perfect line and stance on every shot, and I think I've discovered a very simple way to do it, you simply need to put your right big toe right behind that tape, which, which is on the target line. Make sure your chin and your cue are also on that target line. Once you have those three items on the target line, and you're at a 45 degree angle and you're ready to take your stance. But one thing I want you to notice, if I cross the line, my cue goes this way. If I put my foot on the other side of the line, the cue goes this way. In other words, you have to learn how to naturally step into the shot so the cue falls perfectly into the target. So let's review real quickly. We find the aim point, we've already breathed and relaxed. We visualize the shot. I've drawn my imaginary line all the way back. I've got my right toe on that target line, the cue is on the target line, and my chin is right over it. Once I have that, I'm ready to step into the shot. And literally, all you have to do is take a step with your left foot towards the aim point. Lo and behold, I swing down, and you know, for me, this is automatic. I feel like I can almost get perfect every time. But for you, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But I feel like I've discovered a very simple way to take your stance and get correct alignment. But the key is on every single shot to find the aim point, draw the target line all the way back to your right toe, make sure your chin and cue are on the target line, and then literally step into the shot with the left foot aiming towards the aim point. Now you'll notice, I think both times I got perfect, but what happens if you don't get perfect? Let's say you've got everything lined up, you step into the shot, and the cue is stuck in your gut or something like that, and you're offline one way or the other. Well, the way to correct that is you stand back up. You don't twist your body around. You want to get back up and adjust your feet. If you watch good players like Johnny Archer, you'll notice that they'll do this numerous times, get down in the shot over and over until they get down perfectly. And they can see the target line and the aim point. Now, when you're doing this drill, I want you to work with your partner and give them feedback. Make sure that you're able to step into that line as good as possible every time. And do that five to ten times so you start to feel comfortable. All right, yes? Um. Your hand, um, can you tell me, I've seen people do it differently. Oh. Is there a set way to do yeah. the hand? Well, there, 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 are, there are a couple of basic ways that you would do, do that. Some people advocate what's called an open bridge. That's where, uh, here I'll, I'll demonstrate it. Left foot in the shot. That's where you stroke the cue across your first knuckle and your thumb. A lot of people believe this is a superior method because you can see the cue ball better. But in the United States, for some reason, most people use what's called the closed bridge. That's where they swing the finger and loop it over the top of, of the shaft like that. And that particular bridge is also very effective, but it does tend to obstruct your view slightly of the shot you're shooting. Now, for different types of shots, I'll use different bridges. For example, if I'm drawing the cue ball, I use a closed bridge because I want to make sure the cue doesn't pop in the air, that kind of thing. But very good question, thanks. And when I come around and give individualized instruction, we can work on your bridge, okay? All right.
The next drill, drill number two, we're actually going to shoot the ball. So we're going to take some warm-up strokes. <laughs> so we do the same thing, breathe and relax. Visualize the whole shot. See the aim point, draw that imaginary line all the way back. Chin, cue, right toe, all on that target line. Step into the shot. Perfect. Take your nice warm-up strokes, which are your rehearsal for the actual shot. When everything is perfect, draw the cue slowly back and simply release the cue. And you'll notice the cue ball hit the red line on the coffee stir, which is what you're looking for. And it'll give you immediate feedback. And again, work with your partners to make sure you got that down. Now, I know this looks like a simple drill, but if you can establish a point where you can take a good, a perfect stance every time, the game becomes a lot simpler. I mean, if you have perfect stance and alignment off your setup, then literally all you got to do is throw the cue at the ball and you're going to hit it where you're aiming. Because, believe it or not, the feet are probably one of the most important things. When you're getting down in the shot <clears throat> and you're offline, <clears throat> It's usually because your feet are misaligned. And again, if the right toe crosses the line, go to the, to the left. If it's on this side, it goes to the right. All right, drill number three, we're going to actually throw a wrench into the workings here. This is a drill that was made famous by the Moscone Cup captain of the United States, Mark Wilson, who's also an accomplished player. But we're going to shoot the cue ball into the pocket, but we're going to put two interfering balls in the way. What we're doing, trying to uh, establish here is to make sure the cue, ball, cue stick is following th straight through the shot. In other words, you all, on every shot when you're practicing these drills, you want to get feedback. In other words, does the cue tip come in the air? Does it hit the 11 ball? Does it end up on the left side? In other words, you want to establish a stroke where you're going straight through on every shot, which is important. But again, a, a warning, you don't want to uh, guide the cue or steer it. You want a, a natural release through the cue ball. We call that accelerating through the cue. That's why we keep such a nice, loose grip on the cue. Okay. We go through the procedure again. Okay, aim point. Target line all the way back to the toe, chin, cue, on perfect alignment. Step into the shot. Perfect. Take my warm up strokes. And again, get feedback. Did the cue go right? Did it go left? Did it come up in the air? And work with your partner on that shot and give each other feedback. Okay, any questions on the, the stance and setup and alignment? Pretty basic, and I try, you know, and I think that we finally figured out a simple way to do that. Because if you get your right toe, the cue, and the chin on the line, you know, you're going to be darn close when you get into the shot. The only thing that'll mess that up is if your eye dominance is different. And we, I'm not going to get into that now. I'll get into that individually with you when I come around, okay? That's a little too complicated. <laughs> All right, the next shot. I want to show is we're going to learn how to actually aim a straight in shot compared to a cut shot. This is drill number four, and this is a great opportunity to practice our setup and stance. And you'll notice every table has these reinforcers down that you can use, also has the tape and the, the coffee stirrers and everything. But I didn't mention this. On every shot you watch, you know, players on ESPN, you gotta chalk the cue, alright? And there is a correct way to chalk and a, a poor way to chalk. Generally, uh, you only miss cue on the outer edges of the cue. So you want to hold your chalk at about a 45 degree angle. And really all you need to do is chalk the outside portion, the perimeter of you do not miss Q from the middle. But a lot of people want to grind it into the top, and that, that kind of defeats the purpose. Just gently at a 45 degree angle so you cover the edges. Okay? 
All right, on the straight end shot, uh, I'm just going to hit a stop shot here to demonstrate. But again, we're going we're gonna to use our uh, setup and stance techniques. First thing we do is find where the center of the pocket is. We draw a line from there to the contact point where we hit the 11 ball. And the aim point on every shot that you shoot is always a half ball from the contact point, no matter where the cue ball is. Now, on a straight in shot, the contact point and the aim point are exactly the same. Okay, there's no difference. So let's just go through our routine and do a real simple stop shot. Aim point, line back to my right toe, cue, chin, in perfect alignment. Step into the shot, swing down. No problem, I don't need to adjust because everything looks good. Okay. Now you can shoot maybe five or more of those until you feel real comfortable. But then we'll have, I'm going to ask you to move on and hit several different cut shots. Now, the first one, you'll notice I have four reinforcers here. The first one was a straight end shot. The second one is a three quarter cut, where three quarters of the cue ball covers three quarters of the 15 ball. A half ball hit and a quarter ball hit. But one thing you're going to notice right away is that the aim point on all three cuts are exactly the same, aren't they? So, I, I do want to warn you, if you go on the internet or you take lessons sometimes, people will give you these really complicated aiming systems. Don't listen to them. It's not that complicated. <laughs> I've seen people get so caught up in trying to find some system that they you know, end up not being able to make a shot. But anyway, on a three-quarter ball hit, we do our same procedure. Find the center of the pocket, draw a line to the contact point. Our aim point is always a half ball up. Our target line all the way back to our right toe, chin, and cue in perfect alignment. Step the left foot forward, swing down into the shot. Draw the cue back slowly after your warm-up strokes. And release through the ball. And you'll notice that I'm staying down on the shot. You want to wait until you hear the ball at the back of the pocket. Okay? All right, the next one is probably the most common pool shot in pocket billiards. It's the half ball shot. And literally, when you line this up, you'll notice that the uh, half of the ball covers half of the object ball. And again, we do it exactly the same way. Got our aim point, draw that target line back, cue chin and toe on that line. Step into the shot, swing down, take your warm up strokes. And by the way, the warm up strokes are really important because that's your rehearsal for the actual shot. If you feel awkward or misaligned at that point, you want to stand back up and start over by adjusting your feet. Okay. Swing down. And when you're working with your partner on these shots, help them out. You know, if they, if they look like they're misaligned or something, give them feedback. And also, after the shot, always notice where the cue stick goes. Does it remain relaxed on the table? Does it pop up in the air? Those all are all important feedback to, to uh, get you lined up correctly. Now, a quarter ball hit. Again, this is a little tougher shot. But it's, you aim it exactly the same way. A half ball from the contact point. Aim point, target line all the way back. Right toe, cue, and right toe in perfect alignment. Step forward, swing down. <coughs> and stay down until you hear the ball hit the back of the pocket. All right, any questions so far? Yes. The very first one you did, you were straight on. Yes. And the ball stopped and didn't follow. But all the angle ones, the ball Rolling. Well, that's just the nature when you cut the ball, the, the, the cue ball speeds up after it hits the ball. Because, you know, even if I hit, hit it lower on, on the ball with X, then it would still tear them off at that angle. But that's called, that's called the tangent line. In fact, that's a really good question. When you have any kind of a cut shot, when the cue ball contacts the object ball, 
There's a 90 degree line that caroms off the object ball, and that'll help us learn how to play position. But it depends what the cue ball is doing. If it's skidding when it hits here, it'll go off at a perfect 90 degree angle. If it's rolling forward, it'll start there and then come forward here. If it's got backspin, it'll hit the object ball and come back this way. So it depends what the cue ball is doing when it contacts the object ball. Okay. Is that better? Any other ones? All right. The other thing I wanted to do is give you some game-winning shots to take with you, something that, that Ralph can use to beat whoever he wants to beat this week. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to give you three of them. And uh, these are shots that I've seen even professionals miss. All right, the first shot that often comes up is you got apparently good position on the eight ball, right? But guess what? You're stuck on the rail. All right, now how do you shoot off the rail? A lot of people wonder about that. You know, it's, it's very difficult. The issues that arise that you have to be aware of is whenever your cue ball is on the rail, you never ever uh, use any kind of English left or right. Now the reason for that, if I hit the left side of the ball or the right side of the ball, since I'm hitting the top, it will swerve and deflect, which will cause it to be thrown off the line. Another important fundamental on these shots is you never jack the cue up. Okay. The reason why you can't jack the cue up is because you lose your sighting. You can't see where you're hitting the ball. Plus, if you're left or right, even just a little bit, it'll make your cue ball masse and curve one way or the other. So let's go through a, a quick example of how to make a shot when your cue ball's frozen to the rail like this. Same technique. Find the center of the pocket. Here's the contact point. My aim point is a half ball from the eight ball. I draw that imaginary target line all the way back to my right toe, get the cue in my chin on that line. Now when I step down into the shot, here's a mistake that a lot of people make. They lay their hand too close to the cue ball. And what this does, it doesn't allow a smooth stroke because you don't have any room to stroke, stroke the cue stick. When you set down on, on the shot with the cue ball on the rail, you want to put your fingers way back here so at least you have enough room to shoot the shot. And here's a little secret that I've seen some good players use. At this point, once they're lined up, they'll actually lift their cue up in the air and verify the target line is there by pushing it forward over the ball. And it works like a telescopic sight with a crosshair. And you can see if your line is perfect. But anyway, warm-up strokes are absolutely essential on this shot. You absolutely have to chalk the cue. And because your hand is so close to the cue ball, your hand must move up the butt end just a little bit. Okay. Whenever you get your hand real this close to the cue ball, the hand must move up the butt, otherwise you're going to be restricted in your arm and shoulder. Okay, let's go through it. Aim point. So, chin, cue, swing down in the shot, make some nice warm-up strokes. And again, one of the things you want to look for, does the cue just go through the ball, relax, or does it jump in there, does it go to the left? Always get feedback and notice that in the shots. Okay? Now the next game-winning shot, let me use the how to shoot over a ball, jacked up. We'll take another example, and the same thing holds true on this shot. You use the same exact aiming techniques. You know, you find the center of the pocket, the contact point, and here's the aim point. The target line extends back all the way through to my right toe and everything. Now, one of the things on this shot that's really important is as I take my stance, I'm going to take it like it's a normal shot, like the 15 is not even there. Just make believe the 15's not there as you take your stance. Swing down like this. Now, actually you can use that technique that I talked about where you verify the target line. It looks perfect. All right, now the mistake that most people make on this shot 
is they over jack where they hit too far on top of the ball and they get all locked up in their shoulders and arm here. You only jack up the minimal amount to get over the impeding ball. Like in this shot, you'll notice that I'm just barely over the 15. And you spread your fingers out like that. Warm up strokes are real important on this shot. And basically, one of the secrets of this shot is that gravity, let gravity allow the cue to stroke gently through the eight ball. Okay. Let the weight of the cue, let the cue shoot the shot instead of trying to force it. Okay. Let me shoot that one more time. I did something there that I didn't like. My cue came up a little bit in the air. I'd rather the cue be relaxed on the clock. One more time. Just barely enough to get over the 15 ball. Take your nice warm up strokes. And let the weight of the cue take it right through. And stay down until you hear the ball at the back of the ball. Now those shots come up all the time in eight ball, so you really gotta master those. The other shot that I wanna show you too that can win you a lot of games, and I, I can't tell you the number of times I've seen people below this shot. Real common shot in eight ball, and I know a lot of you play a lot of eight ball. But, you know, we get, uh, we see a hanging ball in the pocket, and if we make that shot and get position on the gate, we win the game. Now, a lot of people might come up with some fancy English to get position, but really it's a pretty straightforward shot, isn't it? All you have to do is Cut the 14 thin, thin enough so that it comes approximately to the second diamond over here. But the mistake that most people make on this shot is they hit it too thick. In fact, if you hit this with a quarter ball hit, kind of like we were demonstrating earlier, the cue ball goes right into the side pocket every time or close to it. Let me see if I can scratch on purpose. Quarter ball hit. I went a little longer. Let me hit it just a little thicker to demonstrate what often happens. Quarter ball hit. Well, that's pretty close. But the, the key to this shot, and you can really pull it off every time, is hit a little bit less than a quarter ball hit, which will take the cue ball into diamond number two. So let's do it the correct way. So that's about a quarter ball hit there, so I'm just going to hit it a little bit thinner so my cue ball comes to that point. So that's, that's what you were looking for on that shot. Let me give you one other example of a hanging ball shot that's real simple. A lot of times you'll be faced with a shot like this. Your cue ball is approximately on the spot, the 15 ball is hanging in the pocket. Some people might want to use fancy English to go three rails and all this kind of stuff. But there's a very simple way to make this shot. You simply cut the 15 ball, a quarter ball hit, which will take it into the rail about here and bring it right down behind every time. So we're always looking to do things the simplest way. And again, a couple of the issues that come up, people will often try to bring it straight down here and end up scratching and so forth. But you notice the way I played it, there was no possibility of scratching and just a moderate speed shot to get you down to the perfect position. Okay, today we looked at setup, correct stance, and alignment. Now it's time for you to get to your tables and practice. But before we do that, uh, any questions about anything? Next week or next Wednesday, we're going to spend the entire class learning the stroke. Okay. Any questions?
Okay, Al, why don't you break up into partners and grab a table. You'll notice that uh, uh, the training aids and the reinforcers are all ready for you. I'll start coming around and talking about it. All right. All right. You can use this table if you want. Yeah. 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 Yeah.